Okay. Good morning, everybody. I welcome you to our webinar today. Actually, it's not a webinar. It's an online talk. Um, our online talk is called Of Clothes and Cigarettes, and we will take a look to Bangladesh. My name is Sonja von Eichborn. I'm the director of Unfair Tobacco here in Germany, and we have been working uh, quite a long time together with uh, Farida Akta, who we invited to join us here on the tobacco uh, production in um, Bangladesh. And a new uh, a colleague new to me personally is Gisela Burkhardt. She's from Semnet and here in Germany, and she's a, a very renowned activist um, on clothes. Um, alle Teilnehmenden, die das Gespräch jetzt auf Deutsch hören wollen, ich sage das deshalb auf Deutsch, können umschalten in die Dolmetschfunktion. Unten äh, gibt es an, am Ende des Bildschirms äh, die Dolmetschfunktion. Da können Sie draufklicken und da sehen Sie die Auswahl der Sprachkanäle. Wenn Sie nichts auswählen, hören Sie jetzt alles auf Englisch. Wenn Sie Deutsch auswählen, hören Sie alles auf Deutsch. Äh, und vielen Dank an Gisela Tansch, die wird für uns dolmetschen. So, I thank uh, Gisela Tansch. She will um, be the interpreter for today, and I instructed German uh, participants to, to use the interpretation function. So <clears throat> today this online talk is addressed to civil society actors in the fields of public health, human rights, tobacco control, and sustainable development, and to political decision makers, to the media, as well as to the interested public. Since we as Unfair Tobacco are a part of the international tobacco control community and movement. We ask representatives of the tobacco and e-cigarette um, industry who might be here. If you are here, please leave now the room. This is not for you. The talk is streamed live um, on the Facebook page of Unfair Tobacco and as well we record the event and will uh, upload it to our channel on YouTube. So all participants are muted and the video transmission is turned off. This is for the quality of uh, transmission. And during the talk, if you will have questions, you can use the question and answer function here at the bottom of your screen. There's a function which you touch it, you can write in there your questions and I will collect them and hand them over to our facilitator so we can get them into um, the uh, into the question of the audiences round. And uh, last but not least of a technical introduction, I thank very much Jan Schulz. Uh, he is um, our, um, uh, he's uh, concerned with uh, press and public relations at Unfair Tobacco and today he's our steering the techniques for us. Thanks again. Okay, now we, deep, we dive deep into the contents. We are offering you today some insights into the supply chains of tobacco and clothes in Bangladesh. Seven years ago, the sewing factories of the garment industry in Bangladesh gained a sad fame with the catastrophe of Rana Plaza. Since then, some compensation has been paid to workers, some improvements of buildings have been done, but working conditions remain still poor and they violate human rights, especially the rights of women. In the wake of the corona crisis, many garment workers in Bangladesh have lost their jobs as orders from garment companies have been cancelled on a large scale. But as well known as the garment industry supply chain has become in Germany, it is little known that Germany also imports tobacco from Bangladesh. Germany is the fifth largest importer of raw tobacco from Bangladesh with a volume of 7.21 million US dollars in 2018. And in the tobacco supply chain too, women are affected by numerous human rights violations. And while these two sectors are very different in their impact on women and on the environment, there could be huge improvements to working conditions if companies would adhere to human rights. 
For a long time, governments have been counting on voluntary due diligence for companies, but we have seen it over and over again for decades that voluntary due diligence does not prevent human rights violations, nor does it prevent environmental damages. So therefore, German civil society groups have started this, uh, an initiative called Supply Chain Law Initiative to put a public pressure on the German government to take its responsibility to respect, protect, and enforce human rights, also vis-a-vis -vis third parties like companies. So now let me introduce to you to Gisela, Dr. Gisela Burkhardt. She will be our interviewer and she's the founding executive director of FEMNET, a non-governmental organization in Germany. Gisela is a senior development policy expert and a lifelong campaigner having social rights as her focus. She published numerous books on the working conditions in the garment sector and she's the FEMNET representative in the clean clothes campaign and strongly involved in the supply chain law initiative in Germany. And now it's a pleasure to me to introduce you to our expert from Bangladesh. It's Farida Akter, welcome, who is the founding executive director of UBINIC, a policy and action research organization in Bangladesh. UBINIC's main work is um, research and campaign and advocacy and to undertake action programs in the field of social development. So it's a very broad area they are covering. Farida has carried out extensive research in the field of women's development, health issues, agriculture, fisheries, handloom industries, garment industry, population, and other related development issues. She's a lifelong activist for women's rights, biodiversity, and tobacco mm -hmm. control. And for Tobacco has, the honor, has had the honor to invite Farida for a conference in 2012. And ever since we have been cordially cooperating and joining forces in tobacco control issues. So now I'm happy to hand over the microphone to Gisela and to start the interview. Please take the floor. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much, Sonia. This is uh, very nice for your introduction and I'm very, very happy to meet for the first time Farida and to hear about the and etwas darüber zu hören, wie Tabak, I was not aware of uh, beforehand. So um, I would like, uh, I think we, are, we, are, we will structure our discussion in three parts. The first one will be on the garment sector in, in, in Bangladesh, the second on the tobacco sector, and finally we speak about the German due diligence law and what kind of impact it could have on Bangladesh. So let me start, Farida. Uh, first of all, uh, well, as you might have heard, I have been long, quite long, quite often already in Bangladesh itself. Uh, we have partners as FEMNET, we have partners in Bangladesh, NGOs and trade unions. And just for the background, for all those who are listening to us, I would like to explain roughly uh, about the situation in Bangladesh. We have around 4,000 factories officially registered uh, and they are all exporting factor factories and there might be quite a lot of other uh, factories, small and medium factories, which are more or less subcontractors of this bigger 4,000 factories. And altogether, there, together, we count around 4 million workers in the garment sector in Bangladesh, and about 70 to 80% are women. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, for maybe also one other information for all, uh, for all those who are listening to us the minimum wage in Bangladesh is at 8,000 takar at the moment. That is roughly 80 euros in Germany, that is per month. And also in Bangladesh, it's impossible to live on this salary. We normally need to have about three times a uh, to, of a minimum wage to have a living wage, to really live for. And women, you will describe, uh, you will uh, tell us more about women discrimination uh, in uh, Bangladesh, uh, the low payment, not only the low payment, shouting and hitting even at women in the factories, 
the production pressure and also types of uh, the problem of maternity leave, which is often not granted to women. So Farida, can you please, uh, do you, can you tell us about how did Corona affect the life of workers? Uh, I, know that, I know that thousands of workers have either lost their job or are earning much less uh, at the moment because of less orders <laughs> from, from German and American companies. So what, what can you tell us about the situ actual situation in the garment industry? Okay, thank you, Gisela, and also to Sonia. Uh, it has been a pleasure uh, for me to work with Unfair Tobacco for a long time. And also, uh, you know, uh, working on the um, women's rights issue, that's how I got into uh, working with the garment workers in Bangladesh. And, um, because, and one of the things that they are, they are the low paid workers, they cannot organize themselves, they are not allowed to organize. And as you have explained, you know, that over 4 million uh, workers are there in this sector. And uh, it actually, it is one of the major export oriented industry in Bangladesh. Over 84% of our export is from the government. So it is very much important in terms of foreign exchange earnings. But unfortunately, uh, people don't realize it. In your shopping malls, you get um, t-shirts, jerseys, pullovers, trousers, beautiful things made by our women uh, from Bangladesh. But um, the main tag, even though it is written as made in Bangladesh, I think one of the thing, major tag is or the brand is cheap labor. And that is why, you know, these people, these government workers are stuck in. So I will request the listeners and the viewers today from Germany and in Europe that, uh, you know, you should look at these women's lives. As Gisela has said that the wage is so low, it is one third of what they need every month. And you know, they have to pay house rent, they have to pay to the you know, groceries, they have to pay for the medical bills, and actually they cannot manage. And in fact, they uh, are really living on almost uh, like rice, some potato and um, you know, lentils. And so it is also in terms of nutrition, it affects them very much. So, and uh, after Rana Plaza, uh, as you have, uh, saying that the international consumers and the buyers and the companies who are uh, trading with our uh, manufacturers in Bangladesh, they are uh, getting a bit conscious that the working conditions are not right, the safety conditions are not perfect. They can, there can be fire incident like Tazrin in 2012, which killed more than uh, 117 lives and, um, and also in Rana Plaza over 1100 uh, lives were lost. But more importantly, Gisela, I want to actually tell you that those who survived in the Rana Plaza and in Tazdin and in other factory accidents in Bangladesh, they are living a miserable life because now they are no more workers under any factory. They are no more taken care of by the government. They are no more, you know, compensation were given to some, but not to all. And also, you know, their children are suffering, their regular income is lost. So I think these are the major issues that we uh, have to look at. And after Corona, you know, uh, interesting thing, you know, let me tell you, the government declared a uh, general holiday instead of calling it lockdown. They called it general holiday and everything was shut down. So the garment factory workers were asked to go back to their uh, homes. So they all went back in the corona where they had no transport and nothing. They had to go back to the villages and then um, 
government did not open the government offices or the private offices till may but the uh, garment factory owners wanted uh, it to be opened in mid april and then they asked them to come back to dhaka there was no public transport these women and men you know they traveled hun hundreds of kilometers or by walking to dhaka and they had to come they were asked if you don't come your salary will be stopped so they had to come but then when they came and there was lots of reaction in public that this is corona they will be all infected what will happen this is pandemic so then after two days they were asked to go back and they, again they had to travel hundreds of kilometers to go back but then um, finally uh, some garment factories were open and they could work uh, they said that they will maintain the safety corona safety measures like social distancing using mask and other things but um, many uh, factory owners started saying that our orders are cancelled so we cannot employ you anymore but this is without any notice so they were not paid any salaries and they were not only uh, paid salaries for this month they had outstanding salaries which was before corona and they were uh, like some had three months of outstanding salary some had five months and they were not even paid for that so then there was layoffs declared by the government uh, the owners and prime minister declared the stimulus stimulus package of uh, 5000 crore taka which is um, 587 million more than 587 million dollars and uh, as loan to the uh, owners so that they can pay um, the uh, laborers but unfortunately this money was also not um, uh, paid to them in full and um, then they outraged workers were helpless because they had to pay the house rent uh, they had to pay the uh, pay for their food the grocery shops and um, so they were on the streets you know we were shocked to see thousands of garment workers from the street amid corona where we had like infection rate over uh, 20% of test so which is really dangerous and uh, and they were still not paid the house owners of these uh, workers they asked them to leave the house because they uh, were not paying the bills so it was this terrible effect on the on the uh, uh, government workers yes so i, I yes. would say farida um, yes. thank thank you yes i think uh, it, uh, it 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 also um, corresponds to what i have heard from our partners as you said uh, the many many women were ju lost just their job or get pay or even didn't get paid for so several months and uh, i think what what maybe uh, you could tell us also is the uh, i was really struck to to read these women normally live on on credit uh, it's not that they just get pay, uh, that they have enough money to live on but they need to to take a credit in order to pay their rent and in order to pay also their food so it is a, they are really very strongly indebted which is also physically uh, uh, not and phys physically and psychologically a real problem i imagine for these women to yes. they have yes. to look for their families yes yes and uh, um, so uh i have heard stories you know from many garment factory uh, workers association leaders that many workers you know uh, when the garment workers earn a bit better you know compared to other poor women of their same status they manage to buy a fridge refrigerator uh, you know collectively or a television so now what they did they left those uh, you know 
expensive items in their house for the house owner to take it against the uh, house rent. So that means oh, yeah. they lost the assets they had for after lots of days of working sell savings. So mm -hmm. in this way, you know, many had to leave their house as it is with their all the belongings. And then the other most uh, sad thing is that I have also contacted many of our colleagues in the village. And they said that those women who came back to villages, they were not welcomed by mm -hmm. their in-laws. Because they yeah, don't because of Corona, anymore. yeah. They were Even afraid of their, Corona. Also because they are not bringing in money anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it is really, so I, I want to uh, just say in this uh, section uh, on garment that the virus we are talking about of Corona is not only this virus that we get in our body. The virus was already there in our system. That's true. Yeah, it's true. And, and, and I think yes. uh, what you, you have said also, maybe it's also in, interesting for Germans to, uh, to know more about the living conditions of women there. Because I have visited uh, places where, where, you, where they live and uh, it is normally just one small room where one family is living in with uh, a husband, wife and maybe two or three uh, through kids and they all share a place with together with other families about 10 or 12 families uh, where they cook and uh, the toilet as well as the the cooking place and the the shower place so it is i think it's yeah. very very difficult or impossible to have something like social distancing uh, as asked by Cor for corona protection yes um, yeah, yeah okay i think uh, if we look at the situation uh, now into the garment in, in, in the tobacco industry, before we come to that, uh, I would like to know, are there any questions from our uh, audience so that uh, we could first hear about them from, from them? Uh, I would ask this, um, Sonia, I have not no questions, it seems, okay. So if there are no questions, I I'm really uh, would like to go over to the tobacco section, which is also completely new for me. And before we enter into uh, to this discussion or the interview, uh, I think tobacco unfair, unfair tobacco want to show a video with the title Tobacco Farming, Disempowering Women. It is jointly produced by, by the NGO Ubinik, uh, which Farida is heading, and Unfair Tobacco, uh, produced in uh, this year. And uh, I think Farida and her team visited the uh, tobacco women tobacco farmers and interviewed them. So I'm really looking forward to see this video, which we are now is now shown to us. Gorton Barkeri, die, what a him hagalopishi. Tultaiagam. Him by Jagalaton Nasra Hedabe, a tamta. Shane Satan Taktai, Satan Taki Tultai. Tamakwata, <laughs> Kazashi Gumasena, that is. I got a bar party, 
फसल खाद्य फसल गम मसूरी एग्लो तुले पर घरे एक बेला तरकार ना थे नून दी भात खावा जाए चिंता था हेलो ओके कैन यू आई एम नॉट श्योर कैन यू हियर मी करीना कैन यू हियर मी यस यस नाउ आई कैन हियर ओके ओके सो इट सीम्स नाउ आई कैन हियर यू आई कैन हियर यू ओके all right so we have seen now a small part of the film which i think everybody can watch uh, also on on the website from uh, of uh, from un tobacco unfair tobacco uh well i i i must tell you farida i was really surprised to see uh, or to listen and to read to read that now instead of wood uh clothes are burned for uh, for the tobacco um and that seems because of lack of wood and it has a strong strong impact on on the women working there in the film we can see that the women apparently don't want to work in the tobacco but the men want maybe you can tell us more mm. about the situation okay uh, but um, for the viewers i think <clears throat> it will be important to know uh, that bangladesh is uh, land is being used fertile land which produces food is being used for uh, flu cured virginia which produces cigarette and also um, for smokeless tobacco and which is also exported to europe and other countries so these are two different you know flu cured virginia is actually fire cured while the other one is um, uh, sun cured so but in both the cases women are used and children are used as family members and they have to work from the morning till evening because they are family members they have to just get the work done that's it you know and they have to help the family so and they just uh, and also the most of the families are under company cards i, I if you can see can you see it uh, clearly this yeah. is a company card by british american tobacco it's a small card you know in the back they write something about how much they give as pesticide and as um um uh, uh, and seed and also there are other um, uh, other uh, conditions in here they also write um British American Tobacco uh, does not use child labor. So, but they violate their own cards, you know. And but these cards are. This is also a national company card. So these cards are very, very dangerous because the under this card, farmers are forced to produce certain amount of tobacco leaves. Arida, Arida. Excuse me. Yes. Can you hold your micro a little bit differently? It is making a strange noise, and we can hear you badly. Can you change? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Try try this, please. Just go ahead okay. speaking. Yeah. Is it better? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So the company cars. Company cars. Company cards are very uh, 
in a dangerous in the sense that they force the farmers to produce the amount of leaves according to company's needs. And company will decide how much price they will give. Company will decide what is the quality of it. Although they have worked hard, so hard for making good quality leaves, the company can say that, no, no, I don't take it because it is not a good quality. So, so I'm sorry, when, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We hear you badly. Sonia, can you, is it only me or do you also have problems listening? Yes, I also have problems. Okay. Um, uh, Farida, can you try, um, maybe you ho don't hold it in your hand, leave it, leave, leave your micro without touching it, maybe then, and try to talk again. Okay. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, can you, is it better? No. Is it better? <laughs> okay. Uh, is it good? Can you get it? It, it yeah. might be the it might be the Wi-Fi which is going down at the moment. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um well, I don't know what to do, but maybe you can try just to continue so that we can, uh -huh, without other exchange. Okay, uh, let me try this way. Is it better? I think so, a little bit, yeah. Okay, go ahead, try. So you were, you were talking, I was, Farida, try to talk once to, to speak again, please. Is it better? Yes, Can yes, I... go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. I'm not sure, Zonia, for the translation, it might be a problem if she doesn't put on her mic, uh, her... Uh. Is it better? Yeah, maybe we need to, we need to shut down the video of Farida, so there's more bandwidth uh, to listen. Can okay. we try yeah, that? Yeah, that's also a good it's, idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pity, but... Um, we would like yes. to see her, but maybe it's better then. All right, Farida, can you try? You were in tr you were just now telling us about the situation of the women and uh, in the uh, in the cultivation of tobacco. Please go ahead. Okay, is it better now? Yes, very good. Okay, so what I was saying, I don't know where I I was there, but. Um, so after the, uh, the women who are working uh, in the, uh, for tobacco, you know, in the field, and also particularly for curing of the leaves, they have to work in front of the kiln, you know, or the burn, uh, and push, uh, before they used to push uh, wood, and afterwards they used to, uh, all the trees are gone because they had to deforest the, you know, all the trees. And then they used the straws of the paddy and now they can't even get it. Now they have started using. So this is a brilliant idea they got that there are so many shredded cloths uh, from the ready-made garment factories. So a new business has started. Uh, and there are already few businessmen uh, engaged in supplying this shredded cloth to the tobacco farmers. And it is quite expensive also, you know, and they, but the farmers have no other way because um, they, uh, they have to uh, cure the uh, leaves. So, and um, the shredded cloths, you know, because it has, there are many jeans, cloths and, uh, you know, synthetic cloths 
So there are chemicals in it. So once they go into the barn, it exposes a lot of fumes and which comes out and women are in, inhaling it. The children are inhaling it. So they get really, and they said the air becomes very heavy because it is um, uh, polluted and it's really uh, fume is taking over. So that, that is why they really find it very difficult. But um, still, um, um, uh, they have to uh, do it. And then- Farida, um, Farida may, may I ask you, I don't understand where these clothes come from because they, how do they get them and from whom? It must be also expensive to get these clothes or, or where do they get it from? Okay. If you uh, go near the garment factories, you will see that there are always waste uh, cut clothes. Ah, okay. When they do the cutting of the clo clothes for, the, for making the garments, they have to cut it and there are many pieces of the clothes which are mm. dumped outside. So and it's rest over, can, okay. Mm -hmm. yes. And so uh, there are many businessmen now who trade on these pieces of the you know, clothes. Now, when we are surprised that uh, for last two, three years, when there are a uh, huge shortage of uh, the uh, wood, they found a way to the tobacco farmers and are doing a lot of business there. And this is a seasonal business and they are doing it, but we found that this way of using the uh, uh, you know, um, the clothes in the burn is actually polluting the environment. And people are really complaining about it. The non-farms, uh, farmers, uh, non-tobacco farmers are complaining about it. Children are getting sick because the, these are thick clothes and they, they expose a lot of fumes. So that is, um, uh, there are now um, huge, who sell this uh, shredded clothes. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Farida, um, why I, I started asking you the, that it seems men want to cultivate tobacco, whereas women want to cultivate uh, uh, nutritional food, vegetables for their children or for the family. Uh, why um, do men, I mean, yeah, probably uh, what is the main reason for, for the families or for the men to continue with tobacco, although they, do, they know it is very dangerous for the family, and the health of their children even, do they still depend on that income? What is the reason why they continue to, uh, uh, cultivating tobacco? Okay, one thing for the men is that they are already trapped into it. So they cannot get out of it even if they want to. First, they become a big uh, uh, of companies that they will uh, help them in selling the products. They will help them uh, get credits. They will help them. The tobacco will bring a lot of profits because food products always don't bring so much profit. Mm -hmm. It bring, gives them good food, but not always profit. So when they compare, they say, they see the cash income as men uh, are attracted to more cash than, um, uh, 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 than um, uh, the, the women, women. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and, and women and see the cash, you know, when we talk to women about it, that, okay, you get the cash, uh, so why you are not interested? They say, but the cash goes to the doctor's pocket because we are usually sick. We have to go to the doctors and pay for the medicine and treatment. So what is the use of this cash? Our children cannot go to school during the uh, tobacco season. So we are uh, going down in education. Uh, we are uh, losing, women are giving birth to disabled babies babies with disability. Mm, yeah, mm. In one village, in one Upazila, with the, in tobacco uh, area, they have counted over 7,000 
babies born with disability. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. This it's is really recent, horrible. The, uh, it, this is a recent statistics, you know, given mm. by the agricultural officer uh, uh, in one of the such uh, webinars. So, you know, and uh, so women don't see any benefit in it. Even the doctors who are around that. Because, you know, women, even when she is pregnant, she still have to sit down and work for, the, uh, for tobacco. The nicotine exposure, we don't see it directly, but it is going into their bodies. The mm. agrochemical exposure of pesticide, fertilizer, it is going into their bodies. So they are quite, they know uh, what is a problem. But for men, I, uh, I would say at least, that even if they want to come out, they, the, all other men surrounding uh, his plot are doing tobacco. So if one or two men want to come out, uh, it is not so easy for them. So yeah, but I, I wonder out, also, Farida, I wonder also, um, I mean, one would think that also the men should think of their family and if they need get all the money that they earn with tobacco, they need, finally had to spend on, on bills for the clinics or for health and medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if they get the, uh, the money, if they get the cash, do they also use it for other things? And that's why they don't want to want to or that's why they want to continue. Of course, uh, they have they have to smoke, and you know it's very interesting that smoking rate is much higher in the tobacco villages. Mm -hmm. the, okay. So they have some extra, uh, and I think cash money uh, gives them extra uh, ways of enjoying their lives, uh, you know. And also, companies offer advance payment to the mm. uh, farmers. So that men don't feel the, uh, you know, scarcity because it is filled in by the companies as an advance payment. So it goes in a cumulative vicious cycle. Yes. That's okay, the, Farida. Uh, yes. Let us uh, let us for the moment. Unfortunately, our time is quite limited. So yeah. let us for the moment uh, stop here and come to the to the last part of on, on of our discussion on due diligence law uh, in, uh, in Germany. Uh, I think we have informed you about this law, but just for the public generally, I would like to, to explain to you that uh, we, I mean, we, we uh, also FEMNET and unfair tobacco organizations, we all are uh, very much in favor of uh, due diligence law in Germany and maybe also at, at the EU level. Uh, because we think that, well, companies just don't do uh, sufficient uh, due diligence on a voluntary level. Uh, that's this we have seen with the garment industry, you see it in the tobacco industry, uh, we see all the impacts on uh, the environment as well as on, as on women so uh, and men as well. So what do you think um, or can can you can could you think about of any um, any improvement any impact uh, and a binding law a law that prohibits companies to uh, to do business in such a way could that have an impact on the working conditions in the tobacco industry for example in Bangladesh? Okay. Um... First, uh, let me finish the story of tobacco and the garment industry, you know. We find a common similarity, although the garment workers are getting, supposed to get at least, monthly salaries, whereas the women in tobacco industries are not um, even recognized as labor. Yeah. But now um, uh, the destruction by tobacco industry is now connecting the uh, garment and tobacco together. And both are doing harmful, you know, uh, to women. Uh, but I, uh, what I want to say, whatever we do in Europe or in other countries, as consumers, we cannot do anything that will stop 
uh, the work of the garment workers. For tobacco, I would say that it has to be stopped. You know, tobacco cultivation must be stopped because alternative employment can be created and women will be saved. But for the garment workers and people who are using the garment uh, products um, in, in the West, in um, um, Germany and other countries, they should first get out of the uh, thinking that taking, getting products from Bangladesh should be cheap. That yeah. we should get it yeah. from cheap labor. <laughs> so cheap labor brand should be gone. You know, I think that is something is killing us. Mm. But what okay, I but think... If, let, me, let me try to uh, also, I see some questions from, from our, our listeners. Um, as I'm also involved quite strongly in this, uh, this matter, I would like to, to make some, maybe explain a little bit how uh, or whether um, the uh, due diligence law could impact on working conditions. Mm -hmm. For example, a, a company, a German company or European company, if they do business, they have to do according to the UN guiding principles, uh, they have to do a risk assessment. So, for mm -hmm. example, in the case of Bangladesh, they do have, they will see the risk that women, we were talking about now, that women have in the garment industry or the tobacco industry. So, according to this risk, if they analyze the risk and see, well, this is uh, apparently a big danger for, for, for women and for the environment. So, we need to take pre uh, precary, we need to take, um, uh, preventive measures and preventive measures would mean that they have not as you were uh, probably thinking it it's not doesn't mean to take back uh, or to bring back the whole industry to Europe and not producing anymore in Bangladesh but producing under better working conditions and that need, needs, for example, needs to be done if we, if we have the, the big risk of uh, women rights violations. So companies would need to pre take uh, preventive measures in forms of making sure, for example, that in factories uh, we have anti-harassment committees working, which you don't have in Bangladesh. Uh, they have it partly in India, but in Bangladesh it's still not yet existing and in India it's not working. But that means factories or companies, German companies, uh, European companies, are uh, more obliged to, uh, to, to take care of the, and to, and to take the responsibility for the whole supply chain and just not thinking of, well, this is cheap labor and that's why we are placing orders there. So that could be, could have an impact if it was really uh, well, uh, <laughs> well done. And uh, it depends very much on how this kind of law will look like, because we, we don't know. We don't know the German business is also opposing strongly against it. They are very much afraid uh, that they, have, uh, they would be liable finally, and one could sue them in the court if they don't take care of uh, their du duty uh, in, in, in their supply chain. So I would like now to see whether they have, we have some more questions here. And um, um, okay, there is one question I would like to read to you, Farida. Um, has the tobacco industry taken legal action at local level in Bangladesh to stop any legislative action aimed at improving working conditions for women in Bangladesh? Or have they only taken action to stop tobacco control policies? Farida, did you did you hear me? Yeah, uh, I did not hear the question fully. Can you repeat it? Yes, uh, the tobacco industry yes. has it taken any legal action uh, in Bangladesh to step stop uh, to stop the legislative action there aimed at improving working conditions for women in Bangladesh? No, uh, actually, uh, as uh, tobacco control advocates, we are talking about tobacco control, uh, cultivation control policy, which is already draft. And there has been some action, legal actions at the local level, 
to stop uh, use of trees uh, for curing. So in the in the hill tract areas, but you know the tobacco industry is so strong that they have used uh, big lawyers, and uh, you know the uh, verdict was against them. So they got very angry. They went to the high court and got it reverted. So this is how they act. You know, they uh, they they are very. Uh, um, strong in terms of taking bad actions, you know, and also putting pressure on the government. They pay a lot of taxes to the government, so they put a lot of pressure uh, on the government. And also the government has a share in the tobacco industry, so uh, government also becomes part of it. Mm -hmm. This is, by the way, also quite similar to the clothing industry uh, or the garment industry. There are a lot of garment uh, producers sitting also in the parliament of, uh, of yes. Bangladesh. Yes. And we can say that, for example, yes. BGMEA, the business, Administra uh, business uh, association in Bangladesh, uh, is full of MDBs as well, <laughs> members of parliament. Yeah, so uh, they can influence strongly the the uh, the, the situation. But um, I, I personally, I'm convinced that if uh, we would have such a law in Europe or in Germany, uh, it only it already has an impact um, even with even without suing uh, companies in the moment. But I think. Uh, if such a law exists, then uh, companies would be much more careful, even in selecting their suppliers. Uh, they could look at uh, suppliers that have uh, better working conditions and better uh, environment conditions. They and they would take care that um, if their yeah. suppliers are yeah. not yet in such yes, a position, I, I, then. They would, uh, they would um, at least force them or ask them to do so. Yes, Farida. Farida? Yeah, Gisela, I just want to say that uh, it is very good. I mean, we have to keep on demanding laws and any measures to have equal rights of women, equal pay for women, protecting women's rights in the factories, particularly against harassment, against their health rights. But I, I am a bit uh, you know, worrying that if you have only companies who can comply with these laws and others don't, then a lot of garment workers will lose jobs and nobody will care about it. So I think there should be other measures along with it that if Bangladesh government has to be part of this business with Germany or other countries, we have to ensure all the companies, all the factories in Bangladesh to comply with these kind of laws. It's not only one company dealing with its own suppliers, but it should also take responsibility that Bangladesh, other factories in Bangladesh, the government has also taken some responsibilities. Otherwise, you know, it will make some big companies will stay. It will have like a uh, few companies will control the things and the rest of the small suppliers will go out of business. And I don't care if they go out of business, but I think if the workers lose job, it will be uh, big problem. So I think yes, we have to sure. ensure in general, I think the workers groups, the uh, garment workers associations should be given more power, more engagement into this kind of actions so that they can monitor, they can complain, they can talk about it so that you know what's happening. Yes. Parida, I agree with you that uh, it is also a duty of your government uh, to take care of uh, due diligence and to look for better working conditions, for sure. But uh, I mean, that, that is a problem since many, many, uh, since the existence of the industry. 
uh, that your, the, the Bangladesh government as well as other governments, uh, in order to attract foreign company, that they just don't do uh, have these uh, stricter laws. And that's also the reason why European companies go <laughs> to Bangladesh in order to produce there, because the environmental laws are not so strict as here and human rights laws uh, the same. I mean, that's why we, we know that there is a lot of violation of human rights, uh, women rights. Okay, yeah. uh, I'm very sorry because uh, the, the time now is over. We have only 10.30. Uh, I will pass on to Sonia now to, uh, to finish our, our small talk. Thank you very much, Farida. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Farida. Thank you very much, Gisela. This was a very, very interesting talk. Also for me, I've learned a lot about the garment industry and uh, about the different links between uh, different measures you could take. Um, I thank also all of you uh, who have been uh, watching and listening to us uh, and for your questions. If you have questions um, that have not been addressed yet um, you you are free to to send us by email the questions and we try to answer them um, and else you could uh, check out our social media and uh, especially then our um, youtube channel to watch again the video uh, and tomorrow all of you will receive a link uh, with the for the recording of this session and we are happy if you share it with your colleagues and spread the messages yes well that's a farewell have a nice day and goodbye to you all thank you bye 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 bye, bye.